Yo, what is good dev guys? It's your boy K. Yes, sir. I'm back with another video. And I don't know if you guys can hear the excitement in my voice, but guess what? Your boy is sponsored. Yes, sir. This is a sponsored video. The guys over there at Out of the Box Plugins reached out to me and they wanted me to review their event system plugin. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, we're gonna talk about what? We're gonna talk about when. We're gonna talk about where and why to use the event system. All right, let's let's you know what I'm saying. So, what is the event system? The event system is an event driven system that reduces the amount of communication between two actors in the world. So I have an actor example here that is kind of like a, 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 an important actor in the world that will speak to the game mode. But I also have this actor here that doesn't need any communication with any other actor. It's just waiting on an event. And let's go into that one, the collision actor here. So this collision actor, all it has on it is a box collision that is set to block all, I believe, block all dynamic. And it has this listener component here. This listener component, it takes in an event to listen, which is one that you create. If I navigate to that, you just right click, go to out of the box and you create an event. This is just something like an identifier. It also holds all of the listeners that will uh, go ahead and listen to this event. So this acts as an identifier that you can pass in. And uh, I should mention that the best way to, to kind of work with this system that I've found is to use an enum, and this enum will be used to actually to, to differentiate your actual events. So if you didn't have that enum and you weren't passing it via payload, which I'll talk about in a second here, you'd have to say you had an event for, let's just look at how many events I have. Say you had these three events here, bounty capture, player died, and round countdown. In this actor, if you want this actor to pay attention to those events, you'd have to have three event listeners all listening to three different events. And that could get very cumbersome. Uh, so just think about how many events could possibly happen in your game. And just think about how cumbersome it can get to have 20 event listeners on one actor. Instead, when you can have an enum with 20 values uh, with different names, and then you can pass that value via a payload. And that segues me right into the payload. So a payload is a, a blueprint class. You right click, hit a blueprint, blueprint class. You go ahead and create a payload, type that in. And you can uh, inherit from their base class or one that they've created, which is uh, it, it passes the instigator of the event through. Uh, I created this global event payload. And all this is is kind of like a data container. You can make functions and stuff in here as well. But it's really just a data container that you pass through uh, data. So I created uh, the event name as a uh, public and uh, 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 exposed on spawn variable. That way I could set this whenever this payload is spawned into an object or a class. Uh, and all this does, uh, it just passes the event name that I select here. And I should also mention this is a tip to use the interface when working with this system, uh, you want to reduce the amount of cast. So no matter what, this this is a small class, but if you're cast into it on a bunch of different occasions, it could get cumbersome and heavy. So what I did is went ahead and created an interface. And all I do here is whenever I want to get data, I create a function that gets that and returns that data. So this returns my event name and it just returns that enum that I created. And I went ahead and implemented that interface on my payload actor so that whenever I am, let's look at my event uh, payload invoked here. Whenever I am invoking my event and getting the listener to, to pass this payload through, I can just pull off of this and call this uh, interface message instead of what you would normally do is cast then you would go in here and you get the event name and you actually get that actual value of the event name. But that's two extra steps when you can just go ahead and get this event name message here and it'll return it as long as this payload has the interface implemented. If the payload doesn't have the interface implemented, then you, you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't even worry about this. This wouldn't even run. Your game wouldn't crash. You wouldn't get a failed cast or anything like that. So it's just a safer way to get data in my opinion. I feel like that's the way you should use this is with an enu and an interface combined together to kind of get data very easily. But yeah, all this actor does, all it does is blocks the player from crossing the threshold until the timer has run down and it is multiplayer ready. So if I press play here, 
you see both actors come in their timer starts i can't pass on this side and if i try to go ahead and pass on this side i can't pass on this side either until that timer reaches zero so once that timer reaches zero i'm able to walk over here and try to collect this actor here and this actor is a global actor that sends an event to the game mode to let someone know that hey someone collected that bounty someone collected the most important actor inside the world you can see we get a message on both screens and this is not all this is is the events the event system is working this entire system for me uh so if i go to my uh my game mode here my game mode of course this is how the countdown works here if we we have a time remaining that we want uh, this set to 10 seconds. Just makes you wait 10 seconds. And if the timer is greater than zero, we go ahead and just uh, tell the, uh, we invoke the event that the, the round is counting down. And if the timer is less than or equal to zero, we go ahead and invoke the event that the round has started. And that's just the event system right there. It doesn't require any other work than that. And once this event is fired, whoever's listening to this event will run whatever code it needs to run. And, and that takes me to that collision actor. It's listening to the round started event. It has a listener. And we're sending, you see on the uh, on the game mode, we sent the event name round started. So once that value comes through, round started is filled. And we go ahead and get rid of that collision and set the actor hidden in game. So all that via the event system, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, how that bounty is working is that uh, the actual bounty actor is casting to our game mode and telling the game mode, hey, I've been captured. And once that bounty is captured, the game mode will send out the uh, event that the bounty has been captured, which will run logic on every other actor, including... And this is what's really this is what's really clutch about the event system is that the event system can work with widget blueprints. You can also add an event. Uh, I have an event listener widget blueprint on my widget blueprint, so you can tell it what event to listen to, and you can go ahead and inside your graph. Uh, if I go to my event graph, you can also run the same delegates that you ran on another actor out here with the with the listener here this event uh on event with payload and vote which is super cool and it keeps the the uh the casting down to the widget blueprint down to a minimum so in my blueprint all i'm doing here is waiting for certain events to fire off i got one for when the bounty is captured we add the winning message all this does is add uh some text to the screen and let you know who captured the bounty uh, and once the round is started, we, we set this value here to show countdown. This is just a Boolean that I'm using to, to, to whether or not this actual object shows on the widget blueprint. If the value of that Boolean is true, we, we go ahead and show this. If it's false, we go ahead and hide this. And this, uh, bound to this, uh, is bound to this uh, visibility function here. So uh, it, it, all this is ran by the event system. Um, I'm not doing any extra work here. I'm just telling this object what it needs to do whenever this event fires. And in my opinion, that is a very smooth way to work it. Uh, it is, you can't use this for everything. Some things will need to actually have you go in and code what needs to happen. But for things like global events that the game mode will send to players for like, uh, say if you overlapped a a trigger and that trigger unlocked a door, that is something that the event system is perfect for. So instead of going overlapping that trigger and, you know what I'm saying, casting to your character and character casting to that a trigger and telling the trigger to open the door, we do all that inside the event system. So I, honestly, this plugin is, uh, is something that I would say is great for beginner to intermediate developers who want to get a system going where when they do something, something happens and it is perfect for that. Um, it also, you can also code these things in C++, which I'll be doing a more in depth tutorial of, but just know that those things are available. Uh, right now, this plugin is $49.99 on the marketplace. And I do believe that it's worth every cent, right? Because this is just me doing a quick test and it didn't take me any time. It might, it might've taken me two hours 
to set this system up to where I had a round based stopper, which is very prominent in games like Valorant or or even Rainbow Six, where you can't go outside until the the timer has counted down to zero. That is exactly what this is here. So it it, it can get you AAA gameplay features very and it's very simple to set up as well uh there is videos out there on youtube on how to set it up from scratch i'd point you to those in the links in my description uh, but yeah this is a a very good and very well thought out system it, it can reduce bandwidth that you would actually create by calling rpc functions and multicast functions because for something like this you would have to call a multicast function when this actor was captured you have to call a multicast function on your on your uh, game mode so that every actor would know and instead of calling that multicast function we just call this event and whoever's listening to that event will get the data that they need and if you're not listening to the event it doesn't it doesn't talk to you so um yeah it it's a good it's a good plugin i, I can't and this is not because i'm sponsored i make no money from this plugin uh my sponsorship was they gave me the plugin for free, and that's was my that was my uh, payment, so to say. So uh, I was able to check this out for free. And me being as judgmental as I am, I'm still realizing how useful this could be inside of my project or inside of your project. So I definitely go ahead and check it out. The link to the marketplace, uh, the actual marketplace plugin, is in my description. It is a link that is tracked. I do not make any money for it. If I made money, I would have to tell you guys. Uh, I do not make any money for you clicking on that link and buying. It just tracks and helps me and the developer see how my videos are helping his system. And moving forward, we can further, you know, create a relationship. It's, it's just to help me and him build a relationship. So if you don't want to use that link, you can go ahead and just Google out of the box plugins and uh, search the event system on the marketplace and do it that way. I won't be mad at you. You go ahead and do that. Uh, but if you have any questions about this plugin, go ahead and join me in my Discord. The link is in my description. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, if you like this video, if you want more information about this system, if you want me to do a more in-depth tutorial on how I set this system up, definitely leave me a comment. Uh, jump in my Discord. You know, leave me leave me some love. I need, I need it, baby. It helps me go. It helps me keep going. It helps me keep creating these videos. Uh, so, yeah, that's all I really got for you guys. So, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.